Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today is a random black box. No, I'm only kidding. Um, it's still drying. I've literally just this minute finished making this one and I wanted to get it filmed, so sadly it's not quite dry. But I am quite excited about this little project today. Um, I think it's really cute, it's really easy to make and it is based on a previous tutorial of mine. Um, I will carefully lift it up so I don't get covered in shimmer. But look, isn't he just the cutest? So this is, if you recall, a larger version of my hexagon box. Now this had a, let's put this back down again, I've got a piece of kitchen towel just to the side here to wipe my hands with. So this was a Yankee votive box, um, but I made a short while ago. I can't actually recall when I made it because I've forgotten, um, but it was a little while ago um, and I made this and I actually loved it and thought this is a really cute little box um, and so I wanted to make a post box so I actually made a little teeny tiny one the same size as this one um, the link for the videos, both videos, uh, sorry, the link for this video will be below and on my blog um, and obviously this is the one I'm going to do today. So this is made exactly the same. This one isn't very good to be fair because I was sort of rushing a little bit. But again he's made exactly the same way as I said as this one. Just clearly this is real red, this is poppy parade and the lid is basic black and that's whisper white. And I've just added a circle punch on the top, the same that I've added on these ones. Um, and I've just, as I say, just made him smaller. Um, and then I thought well I... I'd rather it be a little bit bigger so I just upscaled it and this is made exactly the same way with that circle punch on the bottom um, he hasn't got anything in him and so he's a little bit squishy and squashy um, but as I said he's made exactly I keep calling him a he I don't know why it's made in exactly the same way as the other ones I've been trying to be gentle with it because I don't want to mess my shimmer up um, but this is simply embossing paste I'm hoping you can see the shimmer on it. Um, sprig punch, some little real red rhinestones and then just a little bit of black card there um, and I just, as I say, I just think he's so cute and really quite easy to make. So I'm going to show you how to make him but I'm going to stick him back on my silicone mat here and put him over to the side while we finish. Um, over to the side where everything's going to be. Right, we'll pop him there. So. It's very, very simple to make this one. And it, as I said, it's made exactly the same way as my other one, um, just bigger. So I'm going to use my trimmer again because I think this is fabulous for scoring as well as cutting. Um, and I just find it a little bit easier. So to start off with, for your base of your post box, you will need a piece of cardstock that is 10 inches by 6 and that's 25.5 centimetres by 15.5. On the short side we're going to score at 1 and 3 quarter inches and that is 4.5 centimetres. And then on the long side we're going to score every 1 and a half inches. So 1 and a half three, four and a half, six, oops, over a little bit there, seven, oops, seven and a half, and nine. And that's the simplest of that scoring. And in centimetres that will be uh, 3.8, 7.6, 11.4, 15.5, 19 and 22.8 they will be on my blog so don't panic if you miss those so that's the base while I have my lovely stamp and trimmer out I'm going to do the lid as well so this is basic black and this measures 10 and a quarter by two and three quarter inches or 26 by seven centimeters again we're going to score the short side at one and three quarter inches, which again is 4.5 centimeters. And then the measurement's slightly different on this one. So we're gonna score one and a half and three, and then four and five eighths, 
six and one eighth, seven and three quarters, and nine and three eighths. And in centimeters, that is, um, that's not straight. Sorry, I just looked at that and I thought, wait a minute, that score line isn't even straight. That's better. Sorry, in centimetres we have 3.8, 7.6, 11.4, 15.5, 19 .6, and 23.5. Awkward measurements, I'm afraid, but it is what makes it work. So, we're going to fold and burnish these score lines on here and as I say that it is the basic thing once you've created the basic then obviously you could decorate it with anything you like I was looking for some holly um, die cuts but I just didn't really have the time to keep looking um, but I think they would look as equally nice on the front here. So scored and burnished all of those, folded and burnished, I get it wrong every time, all of those score lines, why did we go out of focus then? Um, and it's just this bottom right corner that we're going to cut away completely with a little bit of a wedge just at that end there. I'm just going to grab my bigger scissors because it's easier. And then we're just simply cutting up the tail ends here all of them as we go okay so that's that bit done pop that away for a second then we're going to fold and burnish the ones on the basic black which will just be the lid And exactly the same but this time this the bigger longer parts here let me hold it towards the window and you can see the, the light then so these bottom parts are actually going to be the lid this is the edge that will go around the top if that makes sense so the longer pieces will actually be on the top so it's the bottom left piece you need to cut away this time just the same and again, we're just going to cut down the long side score lines. And then before I start to do any gluing, what I am going to do is just grab my two and a quarter inch circle punch because I need... I don't know if that's going to be big enough now. Oh, just... I need a real red and a basic black. Ooh. A real red and a basic black. Two and a quarter circle punch. In fact, I need two basic black. Okay, so once we've done that, we'll go back to the red. And I want to run some of my lovely town tape down this tab here so that we can seal it all up just another one this side oops there we go and then we're just going to take backing off those oh come on so that's that bit done and then just fold that bit up and then where your join is you want to start by putting that tab in first and then I'm simply getting my Tombow and which I think is running out so I'll apologize now if it starts and just simply go round in an anti-clockwise circle and put adhesive on all of your pieces. Then with your real red that you've cut out, again just add some of that adhesive and pop him 
making sure that you're happy with the placement and then just pop him on the bottom. Now <laughs> you need a little bit of weight just to hold this down and I found the perfect thing was my stays on cleaner that I literally just, it was heavy enough to hold that down but not too heavy to squash my box. So that's going to sit there for a moment while the glue dries and I'm going to do exactly the same with my lid. So again tear and tape on, you could use wet glue on this but obviously I don't want to hang about with this, I want to get it done so I don't want to wait for it to dry. But tear and tape again on the little tab there. And then make sure, now this doesn't quite fit when you lie it down, look, it's just got a little bit extra so make sure that you do do it more by hand when you line that up. And then again we're going to do exactly the same with this one, so I'm actually now going to turn this upside down, my joins at the back, I'm going to stick my stays on cleaner in there to again just add some weight and to keep the shape and then there's my join at the back so this is going to sit on my box and again until you've got these top bits down you need to sort of help it where it goes and then exactly the same again I'll splay these out so that you can see them so that one will go in first what did I do with my Tombow and then exactly the same process for this one. Just bearing in mind that you've not really got a great deal to hold this shape in the box. So you kind of have to, oh nearly, <laughs> nearly, nearly. So basic black circle, which is going to go on the top here. And then I'm carefully going to lift him off because I'm actually going to put one on the inside of the lid. A, to give it some strength and to help support the shape, but also because I want to hide all that fold in the bottom. Um, embossing paste fits in nicely as well if you want to use that as some form of weight anything you've got handy that fits basically. So once we've done all of that we need to just make, I'll just bring him back in again, we need to make our front piece here and this is really simple. So I have some, my scrap black and scrap red although that red actually isn't really big enough now I've punched that circle so I'm just going to grab, oops, another bit of scrap here. So I basic went on the basis that this is one and a half inches wide, each panel is one and a half inches wide, so I decided to make my little um, collection date sign, if you like, that goes on the front, although I haven't written anything on it, um, one and a half, just so that it just didn't overtake that panel but looks, you know, okay. So I literally went with, what well, I'm going to do it this way and be awkward, one and a half and I did think that that one looked a little bit too long so I'm going to do one and a half by one and three quarters. Now if you've got punches and things that can cut them out brilliantly, I don't, not this small um, and so basically I wanted to just make this into a frame and this is almost the hardest bit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, but it is actually really quite easy. So all I did to create my frame, oops, I've gone too close and now it can't zoom, uh, focus. All I did was the thickness of my, come on, focus, focus, focus on here. Thank you. So all I did for the thickness of my frame was go by shimmering paste again my cutting blade here so I actually went to where my cutting blade would normally sit so if I just lift this up oh crumbs come on focus 
focus, focus. Okay, I'll move my hand out of the way and see if it will play. No, it's not going to. Let me zoom out a bit more. Okay, so yeah, so I basically put the edge of my card up to the edge of my blade. Now, I actually think I want mine a bit thicker this time, so I'm going to go to the edge of the, I don't know, the dark coloured bit here. So before we get to the white and the grid, and I literally just lined it up with the edge, stuck my blade in the middle, and then I, I kind of winged it, if I'm totally honest. I just did a little bit of cutting rotated it, put it back in place, did a bit of cutting and I literally went round this way. Now if you're clever enough you will see that we do have markings on here that you can line up with your previous cut but that's just too easy for me so I just went away and did it this way and that's actually a little too far and then once I did that I literally just got my paper snips and I cut the centre out just by doing um, well this kind of everyday label punch maybe <laughs> this kind of shape and then I just went in with my scissors and completed those cuts. Now like I said if you if you're a bit more patient and technical than I am then you can use the guidelines on your trimmer um, but as I said I'm not patient enough for any of that so I'd rather just do it this way and it works just the same as you can see I'm quite happily cutting the corners out here just the last one just finish that one off there so that's my frame and then I have some Whisper White here and my Tombow or your fine tip glue pen which I actually used on the other ones um, because these were a little bit thinner. Let me zoom back out again now. Um, but seeing as this is a little bit thicker I'm going to go with my, my Tombow if it will work. Here we go. So just sticking some glue down the sides and then I'm literally just placing it in one of the corners of my Whisper White and as long as it's covering, it doesn't need to be on straight, as long as it's covering the inside and then I've just got my scissors and you'll notice I'm holding my scissors at an angle and that's so that it cuts slightly, so as you can see I've got a very fine red line there and that's because I've cut at an angle so it's not straight and then it shouldn't, famous last words, shouldn't show any of the white. Let me give that a little trim, got some of the red there, never mind, get rid of that. So that's that bit done. And then again, I just need the black. I simply cut a strip of black and again, I eyeballed this. I just literally cut a strip like that that will be used for the, where you put your letters in. Does it even have a proper name? The letter opening, the letter slot, who knows? Anyway, <laughs> just rattle onto myself. So let's take all of these out and put my lid on. So where's my join? There's my join, there's my join. So the lid will now go on, as you can see, lovely. Then I want to pop my little envelope slot just there. So I'm gonna just use some snail on here. and sit him in his place there and then my sprig punch and my gorgeous joyous noel glimmer paper that I just used for this one 
And then I actually cut this in half down the join there, grabbed some glue dots, wherever they are, on either end, a piercing tool, and then I just popped one hanging that way and one sort of going across slightly. And then my red rhinestones that I just popped on here. And I know that it's not holly, but I figured that the red stones would just cover up the glue dots and look a little bit prettier. So that's that bit done. And then the last thing that you need to do is get a bit messy. So let me bring this one in that is just not. <laughs> Hopefully we're starting to dry, but it's not. So I'm going to leave him there. But this one, I will show you how I did. I've got my shimmery white embossing paste and my palette knife. And I just simply got not a massive amount, as you can see. I wiped it across the edge of the bottom. And then I just sort of smeared it and dabbed it and placed it across the bottom. Now... Remember that snow doesn't ever fall evenly and you can kind of mess about and play with this for a while. Don't forget to do the corners and just if you've got a silicone mat or some scrap paper just make sure when you place it down that you don't have a red bit across the bottom you know where you can see where you've not put the snow or embossing paste and you just do that till you've done all the sides and then leave it to dry and hopefully it'll dry in a short space of time <laughs> I'm hoping this will be dry in time for me to take photos um, but so yes so that is my hexagon Christmas post box hope you like them hope it's inspired you and obviously there is a lovely amount of space in there for any kind of bath bombs, chocolate sweets, any goodies, you could put jewellery inside, pretty much anything because they are a really good size. I hope you like them and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!